Data viewers, the Colonel speaking to you live from the Grange British Imperial YouTube Broadcasting. And today we've got a Parlophone record, an Australian pressing, Bare Facts by Ronald Franco, and Spoken Song by Ronald, Ronald Franco. It's A3648 by the look of it. Here we go, beautifully recorded as ever. some while ago. You see, my wife and I hadn't been hitting it off. Or rather, we had been hitting it off. we come to blows on several occasions. There'd been a coldness between us, too. After the first few months of marriage, one sleeps so well, doesn't one? Above all, the money shortage had got on our nerves. I couldn't earn any, and I wouldn't let her. I used to worry, and I wouldn't let her. Either I'd sit at home and think and think, and I wouldn't let her, or else I'd walk the streets. Anyhow, one day I decided to swallow my pride. So I swallowed a whiskey and soda first and went to see a well-known artist pal of mine with the intention of offering my ex-manly form as a model. I realised, of course, that my face was better in profile and my rest wasn't. I mean, bits of me are rather prominent. Still, I suppose that's natural, really. Well, I had a bath and trotted off. On my way, I planned several poses and hoped I might make a bit of dough if I looked like some. I pictured myself as Bacchus or Nero or one of those chaps with flowers and women all over me. You know, the sort of thing. A mess of legs, arms and raspberries. I'd never been in my pal's studio before, but I entered, unsuspecting and unannounced, and there he was with knobs on. Knobs of paint on his palette, I mean. And terribly busy painting a naked lady in a mask. My artist friend was very affable, asked me to stay if I must. And I was just going to tell him the reason of my visit when I noticed the model. Well, I couldn't possibly tell him with someone else there. I should have felt such a wet if I told him I wanted to pose in front of someone who did, and such a someone. Except for three vaccination marks and an appendix scar, there wasn't a blemish on her lovely bod bod. I felt so embarrassed for her I couldn't look her in the face. At least that was one of the reasons I couldn't. While I sat there making small talk and thinking big things, I gathered more courage and looked her over properly. I saw then that one hand held a black mask over her face. I was glad it was only over her face. And the other hand... I forget where that one was. In a jolly way, I suppose I had been there for five minutes, or as they say in French, cinq minutes, gazing at the model and thinking nasty or nice thoughts, whichever way you look at that sort of thing, when my painter pal told her that she could rest. I happened to be watching her still. She heaved a gorgeous sigh. Believe me, a sigh looks much more fun in the nude than cased in. And then she dropped the hand that had been holding the mask. She dropped the other hand, too, but that's got nothing to do with this story. Or very little. When the face was disclosed, it smiled at me and said, Hello, darling, and it was my wife's. So we're very happy together now. You see, I'd rather forgotten what she was like like that. Now when I forget again, I always rush to the gallery where my friend's painting of her hangs, and remember, that's the naked too. Why, oh, say, I'm sorry, I must rush away. <laughs> I took a lozenge out of the wrong bottle. That was quite good, wasn't it, Bruce? We were left posing one question. Why was the artist wearing the mask? Thank you, viewers, and goodbye.